Let's all go to the lobby. Let's all go to the lobby. Let's all go to the lobby to get ourselves a treat. Delicious things to eat. The popcorn can't be beat. The sparkling drinks are just dandy. The chocolate bars and... Hello, everybody, and welcome to this uh, new stream. I hope that you can all hear me okay. Uh, and I am very happy to see that you're here because I think that what is happening in regards to John Schaefer and Iced Earth is so relevant and so important that I sincerely believe that it is of the utmost importance that we dedicate some time to actually discuss what happened and to understand what are the things that perhaps we should be paying attention to in the future. At the same time, I also think that we should also be careful about some of the conclusions that people are making or, or, or drawing from what happened to John Schaefer, uh, because I believe that in general, people are exaggerating sometimes because they want to get clicks on their websites or because they have some sort of... Um, yeah, political interest in making a certain situation seem worse than it actually is. Nevertheless, it is still uh, the case that what happened is extremely serious and that it is worth discussing. So thank you very much for joining. I sincerely hope that you will find this interesting. Uh, I've spent the majority of this week just uh, watching all John Schaefer interviews. I mean, after work, uh, reading all John Schaefer interviews, some of the interviews that I myself did with him. Um, and trying to understand what were the steps towards his radicalization. And I think that it is relatively undisputable that some amount of radicalization has indeed taken place. I'm sorry, my camera just twisted a little bit. My tripod here for this camera is pretty, it's terrible, as you can see. So apologies there. Um, it is undeniable that some amount of radicalization did take place and that that has played a role in what eventually unfolded in the capital a uh, couple of last week on uh, Friday, if I'm not mistaken. So let's start from the very beginning. So, who is John Schaefer? John Schaefer is the rhythm guitarist and founder of the American band Ice Earth, as well as one half of the band Demons and Wizards that he is in with uh, Hansi Kirsch of Blind Guardian as well as the founder, singer, and guitarist of the band Sons of Liberty, a band about which we will be talking a lot today. Now, before we actually talk about John Schaefer himself, I want to tell you a little bit about me, because I know that often it is the case that people comment on these things without actually being close to the issue or looking at it from outside. And I just wanted to show you as a, as a very small thing. I am sincerely a fan of Ice Earth. I waited for a pretty long time to get this signed. One time that I went to a festival in uh, the UK at Bloodstock, I got Dystopia signed. Last year, I managed to get a Demons and Wizard album signed when they were playing here in Europe. So when I am talking about Demons and Wizard and Ice Earth, you, of course, don't need to think that I am right. On quite the contrary, I welcome uh, any comment or any further research that maybe you have done that might show that I have may maybe a mis uh, misunderstanding about any of the topics that I will be discussing. But at the very least, I want you to know that I am a metal fan. I have been a heavy metal fan my entire life and that I take the issue seriously, but also I look at it from the through the eyes of somebody who is close to this community and who understands um, some of the things that go inside within it. So as I was saying, John Schaefer is the guitar player of Ice Earth. That is one of the photographs that I took of him when I was covering Hellfest a few years ago. And he is now a bit infamous because he found himself in the storming of the U.S. Capitol last week in their attempt to overturn the election of Joe Biden. So let's look at how this little thing began. This happened in on the 15th of November of last year. Uh, it, this, you, you might have seen this footage that was originally misreported as having been recorded on the day of the assault on the Capitol, but it is actually from last year. Uh, and a German a journalist from the magazine or newspaper Die Welt was interviewing a number of people in uh, this demonstration, and one of the people she happened to find was 
John Schaefer. My name is John Schaefer. I'm from Indiana. A group of thugs and criminals hijacked this country a long time ago. Now they're making their big move, and it's not going to happen. And that's what it is. These are globalists. These are the scum of the earth. These are the criminals that are behind all the fraudulent fiat currency. They're behind all the wars. They're behind all the shit. They're behind divide and conquer tactics, behind the racial divide. It's all nonsense. It's all garbage. People need to wake up and snap out of the matrix because they're going down. They've made the move. They're messing with the wrong people here. Trust me on that. And we needed it to be open like this. Open fraud, open theft. Because now we see you and you're going down. Mark my words. Are you expecting some sort of violence? Like, are you expecting to theft some other group? If somebody wants to bring violence, I think there's a lot of us here that are ready for it. We don't want that. But if they bring it, we're going we're gonna to respond to that, trust me. OK, so you're prepared for that? Absolutely. I think this goes beyond President Trump. You know, President Trump is a populist. He's not your typical Republican. He's not establishment. He's not going out and starting wars all over the place like they do, which is funny. Where are all the Democrats that were anti-war? You know, there's so much hate for, hatred for Trump, it's just ridiculous. I mean, he's dealing with a, a criminal mafia that has been in the shadows running the world, frankly for a very long time. They want to destroy all of our sovereignty and bring about global government. We're not having it. We can still do business together. The countries can still be at peace, but we're not going to merge into some globalist communist system. It will not happen. Uh -huh. There so will be a lot of blood shed if it comes down to that. Trust me, the American people will not go for that bullshit once they understand what's actually happening. So that's where we're at. I mean, I don't, nobody wants this, but they're, they're pushing us to a point where we have no choice. So I don't know about you, but um, that did not sound like a person who is not happy if, if violence actually occurs. Quite the contrary. John seems pretty intense, seems pretty uh, giddy at the possibility that violence could eventually erupt. But on that day, nothing actually did happen. But you can definitely see that he is furious. He is extremely angry at what he perceives as this, uh, what did he call it, globalists who are trying to establish this world government and the communists, he also referred to that, there's going to be these communists, and that uh, this is all going to lead to bloodshed and that he's ready to go ahead and, and take care of that bloodshed and make sure that it does happen. So how did we end up here? How do we go from a musician, a person who is just uh, creating music that many people have related very closely to, I'm sorry, that was a terrible phrase, but music that people have related to in a very personal and significant way, uh, and how does that person manage to find himself completely radicalized to this level? And I say radicalized, but I fully understand the radicalization of John is not the same as the radicalization of Osama bin Laden or somebody like that. Of course, there are different levels of radicalization. But as you can see from his speech here, the way he's speaking about what he thinks is happening, the way in which he is talking about... Uh, the the situation in the United States uh, suggests that uh, he looks forward to uh, eventually um, violence. So how did we end up here? Let's look at first the situation that well unfolded in the Capitol. This is probably the photo that all of you have seen, uh, and it shows John here wearing his Oath Keepers uh, hat. Uh, at the Capitol approximately at 1.30 p.m. on January the 6th in the middle of the confrontation. Of course, that once it was covered, once it appeared on the television, once it appeared on the news, and this photo in particular, which has been featured in so many newspapers, the metal world immediately realized that John Schaefer was indeed participating and memes started to pop up everywhere from this idea of in a world of John Schaefer's be a corpse grinder or the, the fact that so many of the people in the protest could have avoided being caught if they had simply worn a mask that they have refused to war wear because I am completely uncertain as to why they believe that they cannot breathe, or the whiny little bitch fest 2021, which puts together a number of people, um, a number of bands that have had questionable opinions in the case of Five Finger Death Punch because of Sultan Bathory's comments about communism or Donald Trump, Trapped because the singer of Trap seems to be um, kind of screwed up in the head. 
and Iced Earth because of John Schaefer's uh, participation in the Capitol. And this is when I actually got interested in the topic. The fact that John Schaefer has bad ideas, the fact that John Schaefer fell for the conspiracy theory of uh, Joe Biden not being the real per person who won the election or the fact that John Schaefer has bad ideas about financial policy and all of the other things that we will discuss in a bit, that to me is irrelevant. That is, is, is it's not important because it says nothing about the music that he has created. It says nothing about the art that he created with the bands with, with, with which he has worked and the way in which I have related to that music. So that didn't matter. The moment in which it mattered to me was when I um, asked a question on the Metal Blast Facebook page, which I encourage you to follow and like, where he was at, where I asked uh, our, our readers, do you think that considering John Schaefer's participation in the Capitol riots, do you think that, do you think, I'm sorry, that the music of Ice Earth the music of Demons and Wizards and perhaps the music of Sons of Liberty should be removed from YouTube and should be removed from streaming services. And although the vast majority of our readers sided with the idea that the music should not be removed because the music is not political and the music is not connected to the capital, etc., there was a significant minority, a non-negligible number of people who did think that it should be removed. And people started to kind of try to find the relation or the connection. Oh, no, no, look, this song is what connected uh, Iced Earth and demonstrates that they're all fascist. Or look, the members of Iced Earth haven't actually denounced John Schaefer in a way that I consider to be sufficient. And so Iced Earth should be eliminated, or I mean, not literally eliminated, but rather we should stop listening to them. There have been photos of people who have been showing how they broke all of their records or they threw them away and, and stuff like that. And that made me rather concerned, not because I have any interest or stake on protecting the memory or legacy of John Schaefer or the memory and legacy of uh, Iced Earth, but rather because I have a problem when any form of speech is treated like Voldemort or like some sort of uh, that which we cannot speak of. Like, oh my God, how will we survive if we allow Ice Earth to be listened to by people? How can we ensure that children are not uh, badly influenced by Ice Earth or Death Punch, uh, Five Finger Death Punch or Trapped or um, well, Borzum is another band that has faced the same situation. And that made me concerned. And I thought that it was r interesting and, and really important to show why the vitriol and hatred directed at Ice Earth was at best misplaced, and second, to actually look at what eventually were the smoking guns that showed what John Schaefer was eventually transforming himself towards, which is this radicalization of what some people would call the far right and other people would call a conspiracy theory, some would call it fascism. I am. I, I would be willing to concede some of that point. I don't like it when people call it Nazism because I think that there are a number of, um, well, ideological as well as racial issues related to Nazism that I did not see represented at the Capitol. So that I thought it was really important to analyze what happened in a reasonable and rational way so that we can actually pay attention to what happened in a rather uh, sober manner. Now, I happened to be able to track down footage of John at the Capitol. That this, this is obviously not footage that I filmed myself. I am not in the United States. Um, but it hasn't been shown a lot. And I, was, uh, I have been very fortunate because I, ha I joined a number of uh, Facebook groups for fans of Ice Earth. I will not mention any names and I will not mention anything that can identify anybody in those groups, but I have been able to witness the, the struggle that many Ice Earth fans have been having with uh, the situation with John Schaefer, as well as to see how they have been doing this really thorough detective work trying to find out what they can about what happened on that fateful day. So this is the only 
footage that exists about John Schaefer at the Capitol. When we're going to watch it now, you just try to find somebody with a blue hoodie. Uh, and Oscar, I see what you're saying about the conspiracy thing, and I am 100% on board with that. We are going to get to that point eventually. This is uh, the only footage of John Schaefer at the Capitol that I have been able to find. They are walking towards the police, and then the police start macing people. John ducks to the side, and that is the last we see of him. As far as I understand, uh, and I've been really trying to track him down as much as possible because uh, due to my contacts in the music industry, I do happen to know I have friends in common with John or I have um, I have been able to find some family members or relations of him, uh, the names of whom I will not mention, uh, to try to figure out if there is any news about John. I know that there were some suggestions that perhaps John was going to turn himself in a couple of days ago, but so far that has not been the case. So this is John at the Capitol. You can see here a little bit. There are two people here. Sorry, you can see it. There is a black hat and a blue hoodie there. That's John, and we're going to see the beard a little bit. Yeah, they started amazing. That, and that's it. That's John there. Oh, there we go. And it's gone. So yeah, that is the footage of John Schaefer. And I think that before we, we start to discuss more specific things about John as well as more specific things about the conspiracy itself. Although throughout this conversation, I will mention the fact that the riots have been exaggerated for political purposes or that some of the things that John says are not wrong, although, although he has a very rudimentary understanding of very, about many complex political and economic issues. Uh, he, 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 he is like a broken clock. He gets to be right twice a day. Uh, but I think that we should not lose sight of the fact that a democratic election, the democratic election in which a candidate won, Joe Biden, whether you like him or not is irrelevant. He won and a number of thugs broke into the U.S. Capitol in order to force people under their poor understanding of the U.S. Constitution to prevent the certification of the election of Joe Biden. So that's what they wanted to do. They wanted to perpetuate a person who didn't win an election in power. So regardless of what we might say about John, regardless of what we might think about Ice Earth or about any of those things, the fact remains that these people did do this and that punishment is indeed due. Now, I don't think that they should be treated as terrorists. I don't, the majority of them at least. I don't think that it is reasonable to speak of treason. Those are the kind of accusation that tend to be very, very um, dangerous when they are used. And we saw that in the aftermath of 9-11 and it would not be a good idea if we see that now. Um, and I had the same position when we had the BLM marches. I remember that there were two attorneys who were uh, charged under terrorism um, uh, laws for torching an abandoned police car. And they were facing, I think, 40 or 50 years in prison. And when these leftist people were doing that, I opposed. Uh, I mean, as much as I mean, it's not that it matters, obviously, my opposition to anything. But if you check my Twitter, you can see that I interacted with some people. You should, because I'm a lawyer, so I tend to interact with people in the legal profession. And I, I spoke about how unfair and unjust it is to send somebody for 50 years to prison for burning an abandoned or an empty car in the same way that I would think that it would be unfair and unreasonable to send these people for decades to prison. Right. So let's be completely clear on that. The reason why I think that these people shouldn't be punished brutally is because I think nobody should be punished brutally. None of this should should make us forget that what they did is not a joke. What they did is serious. And these people who have covered themselves in the idea of blue lives matter 
and law and order and all of that did this to police officers. So I think that it is safe to say that at the insurrection, there were two types of people. There were the imbeciles who were there with their phones filming, uh, who pr pr probably should only get charged with like unlawful entry or something like that. And then, the, and then there were the people who knew exactly what they were doing, knew what the consequences were going to be, and were more than happy to, um, to engage in violence. There was a dude who had riot cuffs which are basically a zip tie that is double, goes down and up so that you can keep a person hold like this. They're not zip ties, they are cuffs made of zip ties. So I don't know what this dude is going to lie about that he was hoping to fix at the Capitol with those riot cuffs, but there are no cables that he was going to fix. He was going to take hostages. There are people who are like that. Do we know that John was among them? No, we don't know what motivations he had, but we do know that he was part of a group that was doing something really, really bad. And we can only hope that there is security, ca there are security cameras, etc., that will give us a clear picture as to what exactly happened. Um, now, somebody, men Oscar mentioned then in the ch in the chat, and I am sorry if sometimes it takes me a while to acknowledge your comments, but there is a delay between the moment in which I speak and when you see the video. So I apologize. It's not that I am trying to ignore you or not take your your question into account. So if I if, if too long passes, please feel free to just say it again. Um, I think that when it comes to the conspiracy theories that John says, uh, as I said, it's like a broken clock. You get to get some things right, but many of the others are completely wrong. Um, and uh, in the case of John, I think that one of the biggest ones that they often mention uh, is the fact that the United States has been involved in foreign wars, something that as a foreigner, a non-American, uh, I certainly recognize. And in fact, one of the reasons why I am so interested in the John Schaefer case is because when I was younger, I really got into conspiracy theories. Not in the sense that I was a truther or like I believe that Obama was born in Kenya. I, I, was, I, I never lived in the United States, so it's not like it would have been really relevant, but uh, I did read a lot about them, right? And I remember I watched many documentaries that are about and I say documentary in the most loose sense of the word. Uh, and I did that for many years. I watched all the Zeitgeist movies, or at least a couple of them. I watched America for Freedom to Fascism, a few Alex Jones documentaries and all of that. And they are very... Um, th it's very interesting because they tend to mix fact with fiction. So they will mention, for example, how the United States is participating in foreign wars illegitimately, which is correct. And then they try to say that it is all the fault of, depending on who you ask, the communists, the socialists, the Jews, the globalists, the Rothschilds, George Soros, or whoever it is that they happen to be very scared of on that day. I'm sorry. So, as I said before, the reason why this was relevant to me was because I thought it was important to understand how something like this would happen. And in fact, if you actually look at the way in which the media has been covering the events surrounding the Capitol, I mean, the, the, the music media, of course, the one that talks about, um, about somebody like John Schaefer by name, Everyone has been trying to pinpoint what is the thing that created the radicalization, right? Um, uh, Trevi, I don't know exactly which one you mean, so if, uh, if, you, if you're telling me that you're uh, unsubscribing, this is not an airport, you don't need to announce your departure, but anyway, thank you. Uh, so 
uh, the, the question of how it happened and the way that the media has been covering, all of them have been trying to say, oh, wait, look, he had a Confederate flag. So that is probably the reason why he is a fascist or a Nazi or whatever it is that they do. Uh, or, you know, they wrote, a, they had a, an album with a glorious burden in which they have this song about Gettysburg. Um, uh, and that song about Gettysburg, the fact that somebody sings about Gettysburg demonstrates that they are white supremacists and they are going to become an extreme uh, terrorist at some point. In that regard, actually, what is interesting about it is that the glorious burden, uh, Ice Earth 2000, 2000, if there are any Ice Earth fans and I make any mistakes about dates or names or something like that, uh, please feel free to, to tell me so that I can correct it, right? But I think it's 2005 that The Glorious Burden was released. And when The Glorious Burden was released, uh, the, the, the band was actually criticized because there were a couple of songs that were quite... Uh, America, rah, rah, kind of jingoistic uh, songs. But the vast majority of the album wasn't actually about anything uh, negative. It was, they had songs about Attila the Hun. They had songs about the Declaration of Independence. If you followed Ice Earth's career, you will know that John has always had a, a fascination with American history. He has always been fascinated with the, the founding fathers of America to a level that to me seems almost religious. So John kind of replaced religion, because he, he's not a religious person, with a, a true idolatry of the founding fathers of the United States. Uh, and, and so he, uh, he wrote these songs, which is, there's nothing wrong about it. The Declaration Day, also the song about uh, Valley Forge. I forgot the name of that one. Also Gettysburg, which is this fantastic, and I really recommend it, the 36-minute epic about... Um, the Battle of Gettysburg, that although I, I somebody even posted on our page when I said that it shouldn't, uh, that their music shouldn't be banned, they said, well, if you write a 36-minute song about Gettysburg, clearly it's because you're a Nazi or something. But uh, actually, the Gettysburg song is based on a novel, which was then adapted into a movie with Matthew Broderick. So it's not like some sort of Confederate, uh, pro-slavery, anti-black manifesto, but instead a rather mainstream um, a, a rather mainstream uh, novelization of, of, of the most important and famous battle uh, of the American Civil War. So the Glorious Burden wasn't really the smoking gun that many people seem to be making it out to be, except for a couple of songs. One is The Reckoning, Don't Tread on Me, which is basically... You know, America's back, bitches, uh, and um, When the Eagle Cries, which is a song where the United States is talking about, uh, sorry, the United States, I'm sorry, when John Schaefer, uh, which, which, let, let me, uh, sorry, track back, When the Eagle Cries is a song about the sadness and fury that came as a result of the 9-11 attacks. That is something that people, when they have kind of analyzed the glorious burden in hindsight, have completely missed, which is that the patriotism, perhaps extreme patriotism or jingoism that John Schaefer was demonstrating in the glorious burden was far from rare in the aftermath of 9-11. Now, I am an old person. I'm in my mid-30s, and so I, I was in high school when 9-11 happened. And I remember how crazy the world got, even outside of the United States. So all of a sudden, airports became fortresses. The embassy of the United States in my country really became a fortress. You could not even get close to it anymore. You couldn't go there anymore. It was quite a... Uh, a crazy, crazy, crazy uh, time. And in the case of the United States, understandable perhaps, people were terrified about what happened, how can we stop it, why would anyone do this to us? Now, 20 years have passed since 9-11, and so maybe it doesn't seem so rational, rational or understandable, but the hatred, fury, and fear that kind of infected the souls of the United States and its allies or vassal states, depending on who you ask, uh, was very, very significant. Remember that this was a time in which the t on, on television, you could actually watch members of the media defend torture. 
you probably remember uh, something called waterboarding. Waterboarding is a horrendous torture method in which a person, so let's say that this is the head, right? You put the person like this on a table, you cover their face with a cloth and you pour water on them so that it simulates drowning. It is a horrible method of torture, so horrible in fact that after World War II, Americans hung Japanese prisoners of war who had committed waterboarding against American prisoners of war. So it is a horrible thing. And yet, in the aftermath of 9-11, waterboarding was used against suspected terrorist suspects. Khalid Sheikh Mohammed, for example, I think has been supposedly waterboarded over a hundred times. It is a truly horrendous thing. And yet, you could go on television and see open defenses of waterboarding, open defenses of what they used to call enhanced interrogation, so that nobody could possibly uh, be surprised that somebody like John Schaefer, a completely normal, average, mainstream American conservative at the time, was releasing music that reflected that, that reflected the fury that they had towards other countries. There's nothing surprising about it. And of course, you can have uh, ethical issues about the United States military actions in the aftermath of 9-11, I certainly do, but at the very least you should be able to understand why this kind of message started to come out from everyday Americans who saw their lives affected so much, but what their government said was a bunch of terrorists who, and I quote, hate our freedom. So let's take a look, a very quick look at... Uh, uh, I actually, Lorenzo, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm glad that you mentioned that, but actually those analysis didn't come after. I mean, now, of course, they're criticizing it because they say that it demonstrates his fascism. But when The Glorious Burden was released, John actually was criticized in Europe when they toured because they said that he was too pro-America. Remember that this was after the invasion of Iraq, which really turned the tide for America on the world stage. So whereas America had been supported when in the aftermath of 9-11, they bombed and invaded Afghanistan, which was the country where the Taliban had uh, hid bin Laden and Al-Qaeda, the terrorist organization largely responsible for 9-11 attacks. Uh, but then they moved to Iraq, a country that was not associated with 9-11 under the false pretense of weapons of mass destruction. And so America was, became this cowboy nation, uh, or some might argue that considering stuff like Vietnam and Korea and all of Southeast Asia, South America and Central America and Eastern Europe, perhaps America was already a cowboy nation, but uh, regardless, uh, people thought that America had removed itself from the community of nations, whereas Americans, many of them, thought that they were simply the unsung heroes of Western civilization. We have taken the mantle, we Americans, not, I'm, I'm not me, but I'm kind of a role playing as an American in this. We Americans are taking the mantle of the, the fight for Western civilization. It doesn't matter if the rest of the European pussies, as they used to call them, the the, uh, the French cowards and all of that, it doesn't matter if they don't support it because we know that this is right. And of course, then they went to Iraq, they didn't find weapons of mass destruction, and they completely destroyed the country, and eventually that led to the creation of ISIS. But at the time, that was where America was. And John Schaefer was very much supporting what America was doing. And so these two songs, these two songs that were not just about Afghanistan, but about all of military interventions that the United States was doing as a result of 9-11, were heavily criticized. So heavily criticized, in fact, that I have two little anecdotes about that. So the first one is, you have to take this one with a grain of salt because we don't know John's version of the event, but and there's Frieden, the singer of uh, In Flames. They were touring with Ice Earth in the early 2000s, I think it's in 2002. And after the tour, Anders said how it had been a horrible experience and that he tends to like everyone, but he cannot possibly like John Schaefer because he was a bit of an asshole to everyone, but also because he kept doing like comments about how Europeans were pussies because at the time, Europe was not supporting America's cowboy intervention into Iraq. So that was Anders Friedan take. Of course, we haven't heard what John has to say about it. 
We do know, however, John's take about an interview that he did with a magazine called Brave Words and Bloody Knuckles. Uh, I forgot the name of the journalist, but you will see it in an article that we'll post about it, where he got extremely agitated at any indication that there was anything wrong with what the United States was doing. I have the quote for you from that in a minute, but uh, before that, let's take a look at When the Eagle Cries, the song that MTV wouldn't play this video because of the, of the footage that it contained, but you can watch it here in terrible potato quality. Another day, just like any other Out of the blue, it turned to horror How could they, why would they The innocent suffered hell's inferno A senseless act that goes unforgotten How could they, they will pay When they eat Go cry with the ego cry with the ego cry with the ego But we are focused, we seek redemption We are free, we'll stay free All they've done is make us stronger The sleeping giant is asleep no longer If need be, we'll die free When the eagle cries First of all, let's just recognize the fact that Tim Ripper Owens was and remains a fantastic singer. Uh, he, as some of you might remember, he replaced uh, Rob Halford on Judas Priest, and he did, um, what is it, two, three albums with Ice Earth? Uh, Mr. Simoy, thank you very much for your comments. Uh, if you can correct me on that, I would appreciate it, since you're a big fan of Ice Earth. Uh, how many albums he did. I think he did Framing Armageddon and The Glorious Burden only, uh, but I could be wrong. Fantastic singer. And he probably politically, he he's 
probably close to uh, to John. I know that he has some some questionable views about Trump and about the election, but he wasn't, of course, in the Capitol, so it doesn't really matter. In fact, one of the weird things for me and that I really thought was concerning was the fact that uh, people were harassing <laughs> Tim Ripper Owens, like, in order, like, hey, what did you know and when did you know it? You have to tell us uh, everything you know about John Schaefer. How didn't you know before? Didn't you talk about politics when you were in the band? Keep in mind that Tim left Ice Earth back in 2007, so that it's not like he had any... Inf he got fired in 2007, so it's not like he had that much thing to say uh, since then. But they still started to annoy him, which I thought was pretty unfair the same thing with the rest of the members of ice earth because people want condemnation immediately forgetting that while for all of us it is very easy to condemn john schaefer because he's just a dude uh it's not easy when you have to condemn somebody who's close to you uh i'm not trying to defend john schaefer or anything but i am trying to say that keep in mind that you know, I don't know, Tim McVie, the guy who blew up the Oklahoma City bombing, his father, I remember, gave an interview, one where he said that, I love him, he's my son, you know, I don't need to like what he did, I, of course he didn't like what he did, the father of Tim McVeigh was extremely affected by the atrocity committed by, by him, um, but it's very difficult for, for somebody who, who has strong feelings towards somebody else to to simply kind of have that that that, that, that big shift. Now, when I was young uh, and I heard songs like When the Eagle Cries or Reckoning Don't Thread on Me, I think that I wasn't so empathetic about why somebody would make a song like that because I thought, yeah, but America fucks up all the time, uh, so how come they feel so entitled to this or that? But in hindsight, I was, of course, wrong in that point. Not because I think that America does everything wrong, quite the contrary, uh, everything right, quite the contrary, but rather because... It is not easy to know that somebody killed 3,000 people in your own country. So uh, it makes perfect sense that they would make songs about it and, and get all emotional about it. I know that John has a brother who did two tours in, I think it is Afghanistan, but please correct me if I am wrong, it might have been Iraq. And so he was obviously very closely, emotionally to this. Um, let me see if I have the, the where is the, oh, here, we'll, we'll get to it. Okay. Now... The song that we just saw, somebody there mentioned, like, are there any trucks on the video? Yes, because he's like super, 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 super American. Um, but again, we have to analyze that song as it was when it came out. And when it came out, this that you're seeing on your screen was normal. So this is the cafeteria of the U.S. Capitol, one of them, uh, that, as you can see, was selling freedom fries and... I mean, it looks like the cafeteria of a high school on a Friday, but uh, it is the capital. And this is the way in which they called it because somebody actually passed a resolution requiring French fries and French toasts to be, re to be labeled freedom fries and freedom toasts as kind of a big fuck you to France because France had not supported the United States in its illegal and criminal invasion of uh, Iraq. Now, up until last night, I thought that that was a stupid thing that was unique to the post 9-11 hysteria, but I can now confirm that it isn't. Uh, when uh, the United States was fighting Germany, uh, German missiles became freedom missiles. Why you would want to, why wouldn't you want to associate the country you're fighting with with a disease is beyond me, but they did that. Uh, and it was a time in which, as I mentioned before, uh, Terrorists were attacking America because, quote, they hate our freedom, as George W. Bush said. And so the kind of sappy, jingoistic crap that John Schaefer was putting out was actually quite uh, normal. I think that an analysis of the kind of um, hysteria that existed was done very well by David Cross, who's a comedian. You might have seen it in Arrested Development, also in this fantastic show called Mr. Show. And he talks a little bit about it. We can check it out. And seriously, if the terrorists uh, hated freedom, then the Netherlands would be fucking dust, you know? <laughs> As would Denmark and Sweden and Switzerland and New Zealand and Canada and every other country that's truly freer than we are. But it's true. And I 
I don't, I don't think uh, um, Osama bin Laden sent those planes in uh, uh, to attack us because he hated our freedom. I think he did it because uh, of our support for Israel and our ties with the Saudi family and all our military bases in Saudi Arabia. You know why I think that? Because that's what he fucking said. <laughs> Are we a nation of six-year-olds? <laughs> Answer, yes. And seriously, if the terrorists... Hi, again. Sorry for that. Uh, <laughs> uh, right, so the, in, the, in 2004, he gave that interview with um, uh, Brave Words uh, and Bloody Knuckles, and he got really, really agitated. The mic is coming. There is a delay, but thank you for pointing it out. Uh, the it, it, this infamous 2004 interview where John got extremely agitated about what uh, the interviewer was mentioning about what was America's role in the world, so that for example, when the David Perry mentions that do you think the United States is acting in an imperialistic fashion, uh, John referred to it as bullshit fucking socialist language. That's a direct quote. When Perry says, "Do you think the invasion of Iraq was bad?" which in hindsight. It was, by the way, it absolutely was bad. It was a crime. Uh, John said, if you think that's true, that the invasion was bad, then why are 70 or 80 percent of the people thrilled to have us there? They weren't, by the way, but that was he thought. Uh, and when uh, David used the word Bush regime, uh, John really got pissed off and said, quote, if you keep up the fucking language, uh, I am going to end the interview or that kind of language. I'm sorry. I'm going to end the interview. So. Why do I mention this? He was even praised by Andrew Sullivan, who is a famous conservative in the United States. He used to be the editor of the New Republic, pretty straightforward uh, conservative. And he was even praised for his marvelous rhetoric in this discussion. I am mentioning this to show that what John Schaefer was at the time of the glorious burden was just a very jingoistic yet absolutely mainstream American conservative. So that when people are going all the way back to 2004 to understand why John Schaefer ended up in the Capitol, they're making a mistake. They're making a gigantic mistake. They're, they're missing the forest for the trees, basically, because they look at the most salient and think, oh my God, he did this album about Gettysburg, or sorry, that has a song about Gettysburg. He must be a pro-Confederate thing there. Uh, by the way, parenthesis, something truly fascinating about John Schaefer and his, uh, I wouldn't say love of the Confederacy, but rather his fascination with the Confederacy and wearing um, a Confederate bandana, is that he's from Indiana and Indiana was a fucking Union state? It's not in the Confederacy. I mean, uh, <laughs> so I don't know why he has that fascination uh, with... Uh, with, uh, uh, with the Confederacy, but as a man from Indiana, I do not understand why he has it, but he does. So people are looking at the, at the wrong things. Uh, he was an extremely mainstream conservative at the time, probably not a very educated conservative. Uh, John has never claimed to have been uh, a scholar or a historian or anything, but he does have a fascination with history. I am certain he has very many books about history and that kind of gave him the, his, well, bad understanding of America in the world, but that's where it came from. None of those things explain the capital, but we do know what does. And we know that, and that is to the eternal shame of the media, the media that has covered the John Schaefer situation, we know what cost it, or we know what, not what cost it, I'm sorry, because I don't want to, to suggest that, but rather we know when the seeds were planted. And we know that because John told us. And John said this in a 2009 interview with piece of shit extraordinaire Alex Jones. 
uh, when he was promoting the release of the album that he created uh, with the band Sons of Liberty, Brush Fires of the Mind. Um, long story short, we're going to see this uh, short video of, uh, of John Schaefer, but long story short, basically he went on a holiday with his family to Central America. While being in Central America, he kind of felt really relaxed and he, like every conspiracy theorist says, I like stepped out of the matrix. And when he stepped out of the Matrix, by the time he got back to the United States, he started watching conspiracy theory documentaries, and those conspiracy theory documentaries kind of made things click. That's when the steps that lead to the Capitol started. I am not saying that watching those things take you to the Capitol. I have watched those documentaries, and I'm using the term very loosely, and I am not storming any Capitol, but that is when... Uh, the, the the seeds were planted and that if you don't know the kind of information that you're reading or you don't have a very thorough understanding of how data is presented to you, you can believe horrendous things. Those who, uh, what was Voltaire's phrase? Uh, those who can make you believe, uh, I forgot the exact word, but those who, can, those who can make you believe nonsense can make you commit atrocities. And I think that that is quite similar or quite close to what has what is happening now in sections of the far right in the United States. Certainly, before you tell me, what about the far left? Certainly the far left commits atrocities as well. Certainly the far left commits riots. Certainly the far left has engaged in violence in a lot of the mostly peaceful protests they have engaged in active um acts of uh, rioting. Again, I won't say terrorism because I think that that is a word that should be reserved for very special cases. But there is a difference, and I'm not saying that that makes it better or worse, just that it's different. The left doesn't tend to, like the people at BLM uh, this year that were burning half of Portland, those people did not... Uh, oh, thank you so much for who am I. Those who can make you believe in absurdities can make you commit atrocities. Uh, those that... Uh, we're doing those things. We're not doing it under the assumption of a conspiracy theory. So that is the difference, basically. It's, it's not that the actions are different, just that that this, that is the distinction that I would draw between the two. So that's when I say that in some section of the American far right, you can see this very dangerous conspiratorial thinking. Uh, if you watch our stream about the satanic panic, towards the end I mentioned Q, which is this very creepy death cult like uh, conspiracy theory that suggests that there are there is a satanic underground raping children to extract their blood so that the elites can stay young i wish i was making that up um and uh we can see now schaefer explaining how his awakening took place and yes uh oscar before we get to that you are absolutely correct in their last album the heretics they use that quote from Voltaire in one of the songs. I can't exactly remember which one, but good one. And good taste in music, by the way. Root in Christ is a fantastic, uh, fantastic album. A fantastic uh, band. So good to see that we have that in common. So, okay, let's check it out. Let's check what John was saying to Alex Jones, a person that I am more than happy to talk shit about in a minute, um, how he explained how the awakening took place. The awakening that I had was about nine months ago. And like you, I've been working, you know, constantly for the last 20 years. I mean, barely taking any vacation. Well, finally, after the last European tour that we did, I went to Central America for a month. And then that time, I, after about a week, I really felt different. It was weird. It was like, wait a minute. You know, without all the bombardment of corporate America everywhere and just... It, the constant distractions. I, absolutely. And, and so... It was in that period that I that I really started questioning things and, and thinking about things a lot. And I get back home and and I start uh, seeing that Obama's doing exactly the same things that Bush is doing. And and it starts it also starts raising a lot of questions. And um, I had somebody sent me the, the Zeitgeist addendum, and when I watched that the the money creation thing, it really like I thought at first this can't be real because I didn't know about the Federal Reserve. I thought like many people that this was part of government that it was you know a legit situation well anyway i started doing more research and one thing led to another and, I, and it was really i would say um seeing uh, well the creature from jekyll island reading that book um 
certainly opened my eyes and then watching the Obama deception and I think that's when I had my epiphany which was really um, it was it was devastating actually at first I mean I felt like I had a thousand pounds on my chest like everything I ever believed in because I've always been a huge fan of the Revolutionary War period and I'm walking around my whole life thinking all this stuff is relevant that it still matters I mean it does matters to those of us that are real patriots but I mean we've been hijacked and we don't even know it most of the people don't know exactly what we really are has been lost and the founders were all about stopping the bankers they were all about stopping the manipulators and uh, stopping the uh, people that set up these monopolies right and and we're not taught what really why america was special we're not taught what 1776 really means yeah exactly and i mean and that and that was like it, it i mean I, I literally broke down and cried i mean it was devastating it was a huge but it was also you know i started digging more and it was as angry as I got and as sad as I, I've gone through periods where I've been really, you know, sad about it, I also feel liberated because now it makes sense. You know, that's that's the thing that people have to realize. You can't be afraid of this. You can't you you have to take this knowledge and you have to hold on to it. And now, you know, for me, it's liberating to have the truth because I can't I can't actually go through life with half truths. Nobody can. You know, then that you don't feel good, even if you. Right, so that, that's the part about the awakening. There is something quite interesting about what he said, because he says something, okay, now it makes sense. And it is something that is very common about conspiracy theories, and I'll get back to that in a minute. But for those of you who are not um, uh, nerds, uh, <laughs> if you're not American, you might not get the 1776 reference. 1776 is the year in which America declared independence, so 4th of July, 1776. Uh, and what they're basically is in, in the United States, you might have heard about the Federal Reserve. That is roughly speaking, the equivalent of the central bank of the United States. And they determine monetary policy. What that means is that they determine through a very complex process how much money is circulating in the country and what are the interest rates. It's economics. And I don't think that I am the right person to actually explain to you in a very thorough manner what the Federal Reserve does or why the conspiracy theories about the Federal Reserve tend to be crazy. However, this uh, video is going to be accompanied by a very long article that I've written in which I don't break down the conspiracies, but I provide information and resources where they say, OK, this is the claim about the Fed. This is the truth. This is the claim about uh, taxation. This is the truth. So you will you will get to, to see that, right? Uh, there is something that one of you said, Preston, that you said that the difference between the BLM and the Capitol riots was that whereas BLM were protesting injustice, uh, the Capitol riots were people who were simply sad about losing the election and then decided to riot. I am I'm going to sneeze. Give me a second. Uh, Oh, it didn't happen. Okay, so I, I don't necessarily disagree with what you're saying, but I think that you are forgetting something, which is that some of the people at the Capitol were not there because they were sad that they lost the election, but they were there because they sincerely thought they didn't. This is not to justify them, forgive them, or say that they shouldn't be punished, but that we should never forget that conspiracy theorists many times actually believe it. Not all of them, of course. Alex Jones is a piece of shit who has gotten a lot of people hooked into conspiracy theories that he himself does not believe in. How do we know this? We know this because when his ex-wife sued him, saying that he was unsuitable to have custody over the children, Alex Jones in court says, oh well, but that's a character. I don't actually believe these things as a character. Well, the fucking people that he has been fooling for decades, now they don't know that it's a character all they know is that they watch this fat piece of shit tell them that sandy hook didn't actually happen that those little children were not killed or that 9 11 was an inside job and 3,000 people didn't die or that they are poisoning the water and conveniently he can sell you something to clean your water or some pills that you can take so that you don't get sick from what i don't know the jews or the globalists or whatever bullshit he has uh, is, uh, is, 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 are doing to you. So that's Alex Jones. So, but, but many of the people who follow him, they do believe it. Uh, and that is not to say that we shouldn't punish them, 
but that we should really be careful that if anybody is punished who is deep into these things, um, those people need to be, like, we need to address that, not only send them to jail, because uh, they will only get more radicalized. They will see themselves as pariahs, as martyrs, uh, people who... Uh, Uh, who um, who are being punished by the New World Order. Preston, I think it was Oscar Wilde who said that patriotism is the last refuge of the, of the scoundrel or something like that. Um, that's not necessarily the case. I do believe that patriotism is very valuable. Um, not always. Of course, I don't believe in the my country right or wrong, but I do believe in fighting for, for your people, fighting for your family and things like that. So... Uh, I don't want it to, because I'm not, I'm not an anarchist, I am not a Marxist, so uh, it is not that I believe that uh, countries have no value or that people shouldn't be patriots. Of course they should. There's, there's nothing inherently wrong with that if that is what they want to do. Uh, but yeah. Um, anyway, so let's check uh, what were the sources that, as I was mentioning, John Schaefer had for his awakening. One of them is America from Freedom to Fascism. It is... a uh, I'm going to use the word documentary because it's simpler, but they're not documentaries by any working definition. So America from Freedom to Fascism uh, talks about how taxation is illegal in the United States uh, Constitution. Uh, and, and there are a number of people in that documentary talking about how uh, they used to work for the IRS and they have not filed any taxes now that they know the truth. Uh, which would be amazing if it wasn't because I think all the people who appeared in the documentary were eventually charged and convicted for tax evasion. The damage that America from Freedom to Fascism or the anti-taxing, um, um, not lobby, but like that uh, ideology has caused to many in America is truly horrendous. And it is truly horrendous because nowadays in the United States, the IR, so when you file your taxes in every country, you get to uh, like add a note, right? Or to explain something. In the case of the United States, many people were instructed by these bullshit peddlers to say, well, the income tax is unconstitutional, therefore I won't pay it. And now the IRS actively punishes people who send that defense because it is considered a frivolous defense. What that means is that it is a defense that has been tested repeatedly, that is not based on any logic, fact, or law, and that therefore you are not simply going to be told, no, you're wrong. You're going to be told, no, fuck you, pay. And you have to pay like an additional 5,000 or something like that. Um, the Obama Deception is a documentary about how Obama is a socialist who is uh, just being placed there for, by the elites to establish a world government. I am certain that we all remember the world, the one world government that was established under Obama. We were all there, right? We all saw it happen. Uh, and then there is Endgame, which suggests that uh, the elites are in a constant struggle for depopulation. Uh, among the people featuring the documentary is uh, U2, uh, the band, with Bono. Now, there are a lot of things that I have to say about Bono, many of which are not positive. None of them include depopulation. So, you know, I didn't know that. Also, it is pretty amazing how the elites have been so bad at depopulation in the sense that we have had an interrupted increase in population. Uh, but apparently the elites are devoted to eliminating us. <laughs> What is the attraction that these kind of documentaries have? And uh, it goes back to what John Schaefer was mentioning before. This idea that uh, finally things make sense. And the idea that finally makes things make sense is exactly why conspiracy theories are attractive. What is easier for our hearts to believe? That somebody would order children into trains and send to concentration camps to be murdered? just because their parents were Jewish? That people were going to be, you know, worked to death and then thrown into a gas chamber when they couldn't work anymore? Or is it better to believe that the Jews made it up? What is easier for us to believe? That with less than, I think, $500,000, 
people living in caves, got nine people with box cutters, and they were able to kill 3,000 people in the United States? Or is it easier to believe that, no, the government did it? Of course the government did it. We, it cannot be that we're that weak. It cannot be that we can be taken down so easily. It must have been the government. What is easier to believe? That some kid can grab a gun from his mom's drawer, kill her, and then go to school and kill like 10 children? Or is it easier to believe that the government did it? No, no, no. Those kids are alive. They have to be somewhere. They're actors. That is the benefit that conspiracy theories provide to all of us. That doesn't mean, of course. Uh, Preston, I haven't read that, but I'll definitely check it out. Thank you very much. Um, I'll, that is much easier to believe. And in the case of John, he, he says it explicitly. Finally, things start to make sense. It is not that the, the world is complex and requires complex answers. It is that there is a single unified, it, it isn't a hydra of problems. It is a single snake. Depending on who you ask, the snake is different. I sincerely do not think that John is a racist or an anti-Semite. He knew when I met him that I was from South America. Uh, maybe you could argue that I'm a Caucasian South America, so maybe that's why he didn't care. But uh, I never got the impression that he was a racist. I never got the impression that he was an anti-Semite. Um, but uh, I, I don't know where I was going with that. I'm, I'm very sorry. I, I kind of lost my train of thought there. But... Um, 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 Oh, I, oh my God, goodness. Oh, this is age. This is just me having a senior moment. Uh, yeah, so th they, they create this uh, conspiracy theories and they try to give an order uh, to the chaos. In the case of John, I think it was very much like that and it gave him a sense to understand how everything was happening around him. I know that I was trying to make a point about the John thing and racism. I am afraid that I have completely missed that. So I apologize. We'll get back to that uh, in a moment. So after John did all of this, after he watched these documentaries, you might be wondering, reasonably, well, why is he there at uh, that Chuckle Fox TV show, uh, the Alex Jones show? And the reason was because John did what he can. So for example, I'm, a, I'm an attorney and I like to speak. So when I see something important that I think is relevant, I... Um, make a live stream or I write something on the website uh, because I think that that is the way in which I can not make change, but I can maybe get people excited about something. What John did was what he does best, and it was to create uh, an album. Uh, and that is the album Brush Fires of the Mind by the band Sons of Liberty. I remember now what I was saying, this issue of the the, the, the racism thing, is that some people in this chaos that is, uh, the order on the chaos that is provided by conspiracy theories, see, oh, okay, the, the problems are not many, it is a single one. Some people think that that single snake is the Jews, some think that it's George Soros, or something like that, or maybe an elite, a secret cabal, but that is easier to think. There is a single target that you have to go after, as opposed to, wow, the world is really fucking scary sometimes. Um, so that is uh, Brush Fires of the Mind, the album by John Schaefer uh, under Sons of Liberty. It's about 13 songs or so. He released it under Century Media, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, the song that the, none of the songs say anything bad, by the way. So before, uh, I also do not send hate mail to labels because they release music. It is difficult enough for musicians to get contracts, for labels to now start fearing. Oh my God, will people get offended or angry? Just if you don't like something, just don't buy it, right? Um, they release it under Century Media, but also they released it uh, for free online. So John sincerely had this feeling that this is what I do, I have to get the story out, and he goes to Alex Jones' show, and they release it kind of together. Uh, the interview with Alex Jones, I will post a link in the article when we publish it tomorrow, but it is pathetic. I mean, Alex Jones has no idea who John Schaefer is. He says, well, I really like how you, how you are the singer, and like, John is not the singer of Iced Earth. He keeps uh, getting the name of the album wrong. It's It's just pathetic. Uh, he talks over him. It's 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 really sad. Uh, but yeah, they tried to release the album together. Uh, and we can see the video of 
uh, what is it, We the People? Yes, We the People. The first video that I did with Sons of Liberty, this ultra libertarian band. And I consider myself a civil libertarian, so I don't say that necessarily as a negative thing. Um, but uh, but this is, yeah, the result of uh, Sons of Liberty. is the only version of the video that I found. So again, potato quality, but it is what it is.
and I would argue that here we can really start seeing the 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 elements that take him to the capital. Not that the music is terroristic, not that the music should be banned or anything, but rather that we can see that there is very much this belief, as demonstrated by the, I believe, M16s, you know, across uh, of, uh, you know, liberty or death, because they do believe that there is this fascist threat or, I, I mean, the term fascist and term Marxist is really usually loosed by everybody, uh, sorry, loosely used by everyone, because uh, you can see that they have their pictures of Obama in the video where Obama appears as uh, next to Hitler. Uh, but they also have a photo where Obama appears as a communist. Another one where he appears next to George W. Bush, both of them as fascist with fascist written underneath. So like ideological consistency is not exactly to be found there. Uh, but you can see how they believe that they are under this direct threat of someone from the government. Whether the movie, is, the song is good or bad is beyond... Um, I mean, it's beyond the, the point of, of what I can discuss. It's probably better than any song that I would make, but then again, I'm, ter I'm a terrible musician. Uh, I, I basically collect instruments I'm shit at playing, so, so I cannot criticize him for his, uh, for his musical uh, output in that regard. What is interesting about this video, though, is that you might have noticed some of the things in the, in the images that they look like weird cartoons, and that to me was really fascinating because I want to show you some of the artwork made by that cartoonist. That cartoonist is Mr. David Dees. He was a Sesame Street illustrator who has never seen a conspiracy he does not believe in. So in here, for example, you can see how people who deny or question the Holocaust are going to be sent to prison. Uh, next to serial rapists, murderers, and bank robbers, robbers, uh, and that uh, well, the police here has uh, stars of David with the Z, which I assume is Zion. Uh, but you would imagine, oh, okay, so this dude is full anti-Semitic, not completely, because a lot of the things that David Dees has made are not anti-Semitic. So, so he really just he will get on every single conspiracy theory. So another one that he made is this one. Uh, Monsanto, full spectrum incentives. So it's, uh, yeah, so Monsanto is killing the bees, I think. Uh, and also uh, Monsanto is creating GMOs, which result in this. This is real, by the way. <laughs> Uh, this is 100% real cartoons made by David D David Dees, which you can find on the internet. Just Google David Dees uh, and, uh, and you'll get there. And you can see that what this happens uh, in, uh, in here in the corn and everything and, and injecting tomatoes with needles, which is not how it is done. Uh, Evo is absolutely right on what he's saying in the chat. There are some countries in Europe where Holocaust denial is indeed against the law, and I am against those laws. I don't believe that any form of speech should be punished like that, with the sole exception, and I have to make this clarification because I have encountered that bad faith argument in the past. I believe that no form of speech should be censored, with the sole exception of sexually explicit material of minors. Uh, and I have to make that clarification, which no free speech scholar ever needs to make, uh, because uh, I have I have had to deal with people who say, oh, so that means that you're okay with child porn. So, no, I'm not okay with it. You shouldn't have it. Um, uh, and Preston, uh, press you're not completely correct on that. So if, you, if you publish uh, Holocaust denial information in Germany, you do face the possibility of... Uh, imprisonment and or at least uh, criminal charges, which is is bad. I mean, it, it's bad and it's not bad because the Holocaust didn't happen. The, it did. There was a plan to execute millions of Jews and they actually succeeded in that. And even at the best case scenario, even if you were to eliminate the gas chambers, they were still putting people in concentration camps for no other reason that they were Jews and then working them to death. So that would be the best possible interpretation of the third reich without a holocaust not for asking questions of course um 
you, you are you are legally allowed to ask how many Jews died at, at uh, in the Holocaust, uh, but to actually put forward the idea that um, yeah, and Evo, I, I agree with you. I agree with the statement that you're making that it shouldn't happen. I agree with you in that regard. But in the United States, which is the point that he's making, it didn't happen. Uh, David Dees was very much referring to that in the United States. And I fully sympathize with your point. Uh, uh, the, the, no form of speech should be criminalized. I am more than happy to, to say that. Uh, but this is kind of the, the mindset where John started to find himself in. And I think that that is the very important thing where, you know, you see that all of these people, people like John, talk about how, well, the difference between me and the sheeple is that the sheeple, which is this horrible, moronic word between sheep and people, um, that the, the sheeple uh, are, are unlike me, uh, you know, they don't do the research whereas I do. And often you realize that these conspiracy theorists don't do a lot of research. In GMOs, they definitely have a very bad understanding of what they do. Vaccines, they really don't understand what they do. Uh, beyond the COVID vaccine, which is, uh, is very new and I don't think I'm the right person to discuss it. I can say that I'll get vaccinated when it comes out. I am not ashamed of embarrassed or anything. Uh, uh, when it's available for people like me who are young and who are not in a uh, risk group. Uh, but in regards to the MMR vaccine, for example, the, the vaccine for mumps, measles, and rubella, the people like Alex Jones and people like this fucking conspiracy theorist have been responsible for tremendous drops in vaccination rates of children, children who then go on to die of per perfectly preventable diseases such as whooping cough. These are the same people who oppose. So one of the arguments that you will often hear is, well, how come they don't, uh, the, the elites have the cure for cancer and we don't have it? First of all, cancer doesn't exist as a single disease. Different types of cancer are different diseases. Many types of cancer have a much better outcome now than they did 20, 30, 40, 50 years ago. Um, but there are types of cancer that have become very preventable. The best example of this is the HPV, the human papilloma virus which is a sexually transmitted disease, which causes uh, uh, cervical cancer in women and it can cause uh, throat cancer in men and women as well, as well as anal cancer. I mean, it's a horrible, horrible virus that kills millions of people and that particularly affects women. And so there is now a vaccine that helps people, particularly girls, because they tend to be the ones who get HPV, but it can also be used on men, that prevents them from getting HPV. And these fucking conspiracy theorists have opposed that vaccine, despite the fact that it has been thoroughly studied. So these motherfuckers are actually directly responsible for the unnecessary suffering of thousands of people around the world who have not had who have not been able to have access to vaccination because some goddamn asshole has decided to spread misinformation about them so whenever you hear the lie that the elites have the cure for cancer besides saying well cancer doesn't exist as a single disease so you're wrong uh do mention that hpv the 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 the, the virus that caused uh dave mustaine's cancer Bruce Dickinson's cancer, um, that that type, that that disease is actually preventable now through the HPV vaccine and that people should actually get it. So they, they, that is the, the, the big issue about the research. And we're going to see a, a note about the research in a, in a minute. But I wanted to show you something else before that. Uh, oh, yeah. Uh, Mikhail Todor there is mentioning something that regrettably I have seen as well. The HPV vaccine uh, has also been opposed this is really outside of the scope of what we we're going to talk about today, but I think it's absolutely worth mentioning. Uh, some people don't want to vaccinate uh, girls because um, I don't want my daughter to be a slut. I'm absolutely serious. That's the argument. My mother is, uh, is a doctor and she has uh, encountered that argument. Uh, from patients, and of course, that's not the only anecdotal evidence. You can, if you Google uh, HPV vaccine refusal, a lot of it comes from the idea that um, if you give a girl something that will make her less likely to get a sexually transmitted disease, she's just gonna become a slut. Because, uh, by the way, I'll just go on the record. If I ever have a daughter, I prefer that she sucks dick every day than she dies of cancer. 
I mean, this shouldn't be up for debate. It is better that your daughter has a healthy sex life than your daughter dying of cancer. This shouldn't be something that anybody needs to say out loud. Uh, so it, it is worth mentioning it. Uh, anyway, so before we get to that, uh, or, or to continue with that, I want to show you another step in John's radicalization. Uh, and that was his uh, fascination with... Um, um, um uh, fascination with the f so again one of the conspiracy theories that john really went into went deep into because he doesn't so john didn't get into all of them so john didn't get into aliens he has spoken in many interviews that i'm not into the alien shit i don't know they may or may not exist i don't know i don't care but um but he has absolutely you know hook, line, and sinker with the Federal Reserve uh, conspiracy theories. And basically the idea is that the government is creating a lot of money that the government doesn't actually have the backing for, which is true, uh, and that that is going to result in a police state. They've been saying this for many decades, so the police state still doesn't come. And of course you can say that the security apparatus of the United States and the rest of the world has increased, but it is not a police state, so the, the, certain terms do have definitions, and and uh, and it is not a police state. And so, as part of his, um, you know, uh, crap about the, the 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 Federal Reserve and the money policies, he was invited to have a little cameo in a movie called Silver Circle, a movie that regrettably I have not been able to find. I try, It was on Amazon and iTunes, but uh, many years ago, so now it, it cannot be found. Um, but, uh, but, um, but I can, I could find a music video that they made on that movie. I don't know if it appears in the film itself or not, uh, about from the song Spirits of the Times, which is the English the English expression for zeitgeist, the spirit of the times, uh, which John Schaefer singing in uh, what sincerely looks like a bad fan video made on the engine of Grand Theft Auto Vice City. If you play video games, when you see this, you'll know exactly what I mean. It is terrible. This is John from Sons of Liberty, and uh, I got contacted from uh, Pasha Roberts, who's the producer of the film, um, Silver Circle, after he heard Jekyll Island on one of the radio stations in the States, and, uh, and he was interested in Sons having some soundtrack uh, you know, action on the film, and so I was obviously really into that, and, uh, and then I ended up doing a cameo in the movie, so I never really thought I'd see myself as a cartoon character, but it's, it's pretty funny. Pretty cool to see. Uh, film has a very important message to it, and and I think uh, you know the fact that it exposes the fiat currency system and how dangerous that is for all of us is really cool. And it's uh, it's informative and fun. And I wish I wish the guys all the best. Uh, just a a little addendum there. When people speak about fiat currency. Uh, very basic explanation. I'm not gonna get into the conspiracy aspect of it, but basically this is the following. Um, Money used to be backed in gold. So a country would have X amount in gold set put away somewhere, and you would then have the equivalent of that circulating in society in the form of cash or coins, right? So a bill or a coin. And in fact, when America had the gold standard, the bill said this is redeemable in gold. Fiat currency is what exists now because most countries, for obvious reasons, are not on the gold standard. Because turns out that having a lot of shiny things uh, is not like a great fi financial policy. But that is what they mean by fiat currency. So let's let's continue. It was a, it was a blast working on the set with them, and, and I think this video is going to be cool, and the movie is really great. It's a great script, so check it out.
Why is he here? Nathan J. J. Nathan. As they print more money, inflation grows until it's runaway inflation like we have now. How does this help anything? These silver coins are honest. They contain their own value. Their value can't evaporate the way paper money does. They straight up blew up the capital. No, sorry, it's the Federal Reserve, sorry. Yeah, so regrettably, this is not in um, in uh, iTunes anymore because I really wanted to to be able to watch the entire thing. Uh, it might be worth mentioning that this film is from 2012. Um, that's a long time after even the first Toy Story was made, and the first Toy Story look about a thousand times better. And there are engines that you can use to make. So this is. It's just bizarre. Uh, it was a bizarre thing. But uh, as you can see, it deals with this idea of the enormous threat that is posed by fiat currency and the Federal Reserve in the United States, and that at some point, this will reasonably lead to a police state, a police state uh, with about money and inflation and stuff like that. Basically, the worst uh, 
<laughs> like the most boring version uh, of um of like Red Dawn in your that you've ever seen. At least Red Dawn had communists uh, invading America. In this case, like they don't have the gold standard in the back, so it's it's really really bad. Um, in any case, the this is perhaps why conspiracy theories uh, end up being so concerning because when people say that they oppose vaccinating their children, for example, they say, well, I am my kid's mother or father or uncle or whatever. I know him and I know what's best for him. So people start to give themselves a kind of knowledge, power or skill that they don't necessarily have simply for circumstances that are a bit absurd. Like, I mean, I, I like my mom and I love her, but I don't think she has a deep understanding of my endocrin endocrinological needs compared to that of an actual endocrinologist, for example, right? Or if I had a kid, I wouldn't know more about whether or not his body should be vaccinated just because I happen to have contributed to the sperm that eventually turned him into a child. So they make that a necessary connection. And you can see here John Schaefer being very proud about the fact that he does that. The biggest point is just don't be in denial. Don't put your head back in the sand. You know, do the research and trust your gut instinct. If it feels like it's true, it probably is. And I mean, because there's a lot of misinformation out there on the Internet. And that's the thing, man, I didn't even. If it feels true to your gut, it probably is true. It's an extremely dangerous and dumb thing to say. That is obviously not accurate. But that is how we get to 2020. I am there are obviously many more things in between and I will I mention them in the in the article that I urge you to read. It will be published tomorrow. Um, but it leads us here because you have to understand conspiracy mindset. So a lot of the things that happened in 2020 have been predicted by conspiracy theorists. And I say predicted, quote unquote, because as I said before, a broken clock gets to be right twice a day. If you say there will be a pandemic, eventually there will be one. Uh, so people will pay attention to the fact that, well, Alex Jones said there would be a pandemic. Yes, but he also said that Obama was going to establish the one world government or that Sandy Hook was an inside job. So all of those things. But people forget the misses and remember the hits only. And so as a result of that, a lot of people, their brains got absolutely fried by 2020 and the pandemic. But also, and let's be honest, many people on the right, particularly in the United States, had their brains fried also as a result of the way in which the media was acting with Donald Trump. Because Donald, so just to get it out of the way, I am obviously neither an American citizen nor do I live in the United States. So my opinion about Donald Trump are, ab are absolutely irrelevant. However, if I had lived in the United States, I would not have voted for Donald Trump, even beyond politics. I think that he is not a person that should ever have any power over another human being. He's a despicable human being, separate from any politics. That doesn't mean that Biden is better. That doesn't mean that Clinton was better. It only means that Donald Trump has always been a gigantic piece of shit. And I thought that well before he got into politics, just from seeing the man, right? And... There are many in the media who were unable to separate that visceral dislike of Donald Trump from covering him as a president. And the fact that he was this person who was always saying crazy shit on Twitter or who was making extremely offensive comments, that led to many to say, well, anybody who voted for him must be a Nazi. And demonstrably, not everybody who voted for him is indeed a Nazi. Anybody who likes him is a white supremacy and the, the supremacist, and demonstrably that is not the case. Even now, for reasons that I don't understand, but they certainly do, Donald Trump got more black, more black votes, Latino votes and minority votes than any other Republican president in the past. Now, granted, the bar is very low, but it demonstrates that there are many people who see themselves represented by Donald Trump, but who, when they watch the media, they don't see a voice that actually acknowledges their existence or who values their experiences. Not in the sense that they need to say, well, you support Donald Trump and therefore you are right, but rather that they did not cover Donald Trump in a way that was accurate. And that results in people who say the media lies being able to say, yes, look, 
the media lies. The best example of this is what happened with Russia. If you ask today in the United States, there is a non-insignificant, so about, about half of Democrats who have been polled, I, I don't quote me on the number, I will put it in the, in the article, who believe that in the 2012 elections, so Clinton versus Trump, Russia hacked voting machines. That is a real belief that many Democrats had, even have, even though it never happened. And for four years, people who voted for Donald Trump were constantly told this is an illegitimate president, Putin got him elected, and a number of things that evidence has demonstrated were not true. There was this Mueller report thing that ended up saying that Trump is a piece of shit and Trump uh, has committed illegal actions. A number of things. I am not even debating those things. As I said, I actively dislike Donald Trump and he should not have, have ever been president. But he did not coordinate with Russia to become president. That doesn't change the fact that maybe Russia would have liked to see him as president. It just means that they did not coordinate. In other words, they didn't plan with each other to get this man elected. For four years, people heard that. They knew that it wasn't true. They knew that it wasn't being covered correctly. And that played into the conspiration of this mindset. Because then you can say, look, it is true. Alex Jones, he has been telling the truth all the time. The media is lying to us. That's what they're doing. They're saying all of these lies to us. And then you become an easier prey for these conspiracy theory predators that are throwing away and using half-truths in order to convince people of atrocities. And so when we get to 2020, you suddenly have a situation of the pandemic. And what is happening in the pandemic? Because Trump was saying so many crazy things about the pandemic, the result was that anything that wasn't Trump vis-a-vis -vis the pandemic was seen as positive. So if you had an issue about the lockdowns, what? Are you a Trumpist fascist who doesn't believe in the pan in, in the pandemic? If you, say, if you said anything about... Uh, the protest, remember how weird it was that first it was, it is a duty not to go out, then the BLM protest, it is a duty to go out, then Trump has a rally, it is a duty not to go out. People noticed that. Even I, as a very anti-Trump person, noticed that and felt very concerned about it. And I am not the only person who has that view. As I, as I mentioned, I consider myself a civil libertarian, but you can find many people on the left who have raised similar concerns about that. Uh, Glenn Greenwald, to name one, who is a pretty lefty dude, uh, as, as far as, you know, uh, public healthcare, public housing, etc. So fairly, and a gay dude, so really not uh, a Nazi or anything. Um, the, the he was saying how it is weird the way in which this situation is being covered because we're telling people don't go out okay go out okay don't go out okay go out no so that you're giving them bad messages in a way that makes people incredulous do you think for example this is a real question it's not a rhetorical question do you think that it was good or bad for the public understanding of the pandemic and the seriousness of the pandemic that when the blm marches were happening People said that it is that the pandemic is less dangerous than police brutality, even though the pandemic has killed more African Americans than the police has, for example. That is not a small thing, right? Do you think that then the people who were saying, well, I don't give a shit, I want to have my work, I want to do whatever, do you think that those people then believe that the pandemic was as serious as it actually is? I would argue that it didn't. It radicalized them more. And that radicalization, I think we can see in very, very serious ways in a video that I found in which John Schaefer um, endorsed a libertarian candidate for the governorship of Indiana. The video is now unlisted, but I have it. So let's check it out. And I don't know what you think about it, but to me, the video is creepy. John doesn't say anything violent. He's not threatening anything. But you can see, in my eyes, and of course you're free to disagree, that the dude is all in. And that this is not going to end well. Hello, my name is John Schaefer, and I'm a professional guitar player and songwriter and the founder of the heavy metal bands Iced Earth, Demons and Wizards, and Sons of Liberty. 
First and foremost, I'm a Hoosier. I was born in Franklin, Indiana. For those who are not American or don't know the expression, he says, I'm a Hoosier. Hoosier is just a person from Indiana. That's the meaning. So he's saying, I'm from Indiana and therefore listen to my rest of Indiana voting ideas. And I've lived in many parts of the state throughout my life. I'm making this video to throw my full support behind Donald Rainwater, Libertarian Party candidate for the governor of Indiana. For far too long, born in Franklin, Indiana, and have lived in many parts of the state throughout my life. I'm making this video to throw my full support behind Donald Rainwater, Libertarian Party candidate for the governor of Indiana. For far too long, we have allowed the big government duopoly of Republicans and Democrats to rule us and rape us through brutal taxation and regulation that never benefits we the people, but in fact, benefits large globalist corporations and the government's own interests. They would have you believe that the virus has destroyed our economy, but that is simply a lie. It's the government's response to the virus that has destroyed our economy. It has ruined countless family-owned businesses in this state all over the United States and many parts of the world. It is heartbreaking to see how many governors in this country have betrayed their oaths to the Constitution and pushed draconian measures on their constituents during this crisis. Are we really supposed to believe that they are enforcing these lockdowns and mask mandates because they love and care about us so much? Really? If government was doing this out of its love and concern for the people's well-being, would they allow toxins in the food, the big sugar lobby, dangerous vaccines, toxic water, and many of the big pharma cover-ups that consistently take place? Surely they would have outlawed smoking cigarettes if they were so loving and concerned about our health, right? Nonsense. All of this has been about power and control over you. They decided that you were not essential, and the big box stores were. They decided to muzzle you with mask mandates that no real science supports. They want to contact trace you through your phone. Have you thought this through carefully? They are pushing us into dangerous territory. They pushed forward with tyrannical measures and nanny state collectivist garbage while we the people have suffered losses that some of us will never come back from. These corrupt politicians will destroy every small business in this country and in our state, and they will gift your future to their multinational corporate overlords. Will you continue to allow this to happen here in Indiana? We are at a crossroads. The candidates and elected officials of the two-party system have betrayed us time and time again. They are puppets and they have gotten away with their crimes for far too long. Donald Rainwater understands and respects the founding principles of our country. And he knows that embracing those founding ideals is the only way out of this mess. Sadly, you will not find that message in either the Republican or Democrat candidates platform. After all, it's really two big government status that Rainwater is running against. It makes no difference if one has an R or a D next to their name. It's time we wake up to that fact. If we stay on this path, we the people lose. It's time for a real change, Indiana. It's time to get back to real Americana so that we can know peace and prosperity again. Donald Rainwater for Indiana. So one of the things that are quite fascinating for me about part of the conspiracy theories that came as a result of the pandemic was the idea that masks muzzle people. 
So regardless of the science, and I don't think I am the right person to to talk about it, uh, I do understand, and, and that is something that is worth conceding, that uh, the actual effectiveness of, of masks is uh, questionable. But because it is questionable, and it's, to me, for example, the, the argument always was the following. Uh, if masks might help, and they represent a very small effort on my part, in other words, all I have to do is to just tie a surgical mask behind me, get home, throw it in the wash, put it on the next day if I need to, and that might help, I am willing to do that. It is a very low investment for a possible very high return helping other people not get infected. The term muscling, I don't like because this is muscling. Not being able to speak, you can speak through your mask. So it is a very bizarre thing that the conspiracy theories have had as far as masks are concerned. He also throws other things like they're poisoning our water because that is something, uh, unless he's referring to Flint, Michigan, where there was, in the case of the United States, a very bad case of actual poisoning in the water. I think it was lead. I could be mistaken. But in general, it tends to be because of fluoride in the water, which conspiracy theories believe that because there is fluoridation of the water, we all become easier to manipulate. Somehow, all of these fucking bright people have managed to drink florid, fluorinated water their entire life, and they've never become one of us, one of us sheep. Uh, and conveniently, you can buy a water purifier from Alex Jones. Conveniently, he sells it. Um, but uh, th that's what he's refer referring to. He's also saying something that is true, which is the, how many people of the working class have been absolutely destroyed by this pandemic, Many of them will not come out on top. They will not come out very well. And that the people who benefited from the pandemic were companies like Amazon because they already were selling everything online. And when you have stores close, people go to Amazon. But your local mom and pop store in the corner, they're screwed. And it has been shameful to see the liberal media treat those people as if they were COVID deniers simply because they have to face the fear of not knowing whether or not they'll be able to put food on the table next month. This is why the Trump presidency has been so destructive, not necessarily because of Trump, but rather because it simplified complex debates in only two options. And it is very similar to going back to this 9-11 situation with which we opened of either you're with us or you are against us. Either you believe in freedom or you believe in terrorism and you support the terrorists. Either you believe in everything CNN has to say about diseases, or you are a Trump supporter who probably eats dirt and injects bleach. Complex questions cannot be merely simplified or constantly to, to simple answers. Conspiracy theories offer simple answers to complex questions, but, but so does this uh, simplification of those who hold those beliefs of the, or those who disagree with us. As I said, we cannot simply look at the people who invaded the capital as, oh, they must be Nazis. But, uh, I mean, they're still wrong and they need to be punished. I'm not trying to sympathize or, or uh, justify them. But we need to really look at things carefully before we make a judgment. That is, in my opinion, and of course you are all free to disagree, the path that we can see in the radicalization of John Schaefer, a person who starts from a very mainstream position in American right wing, and eventually through conspiracy theories, ends up immersed in an extremely destructive philosophy that takes him to the Capitol. I don't even think the dude particularly cares about Donald Trump, as in there were people there who, who are like, uh, particularly the very religious people uh, who are Trump supporters, the evangelical Christians have become quite creepy and there is a very disgusting mix of religion and politics among the evangelicals who support Trump. In the case of John, I think he just sees us as a man who is daring to attack the, the deep state because he has been uh, immersed in the kind of conspiracy theories where that narrative, that narrative of good versus evil, darkness versus light, makes sense. 
So from mainstream conservatism, mainstream uneducated, and I don't mean that as a as a as a as an as, a, as, a, as, a, as an insult. I mean uneducated in the sense that it's not coming from the halls of academia. Um, from that conservatism to conspiracy theories to eventually the COVID-19 pandemic breaking him. Again, this is not a justification, but musicians all over the world are hurting tremendously. People whose revenue comes uniquely through touring are out of a job without any understanding of when they will be able to do it again. So all of those things eventually play a role until it breaks these people, it fries their brains, and they end up launching themselves into this. Let's not forget that in the same way in which we can look at the Al-Qaeda terrorists, not to justify them or forgive them, but to understand what kind of things makes a man put a, an explosive vest and blow themselves up, we should also be, uh, be able to... Uh, to, to, to think of the people who stormed the Capitol and look at them in a, not in an empathetic way, but at least with a real desire to understand what led to those people. And you're probably wondering, well, Jay, why do you care? Who cares if people think that John Schaefer is shit? The reason why I care about it is not for any particular defense of John. As I said, he committed a crime and I think that he should be punished accordingly and fairly. Uh, but I care because I have seen some of the comments that have been written by some of the media about it, talking about the things that we should look out for. And for example, one of the ones that really made me concerned was Metal Sucks, uh, which I know is a really bottom of the barrel kind of thing, and I don't like to mention them even. But they say that one of the suspicious things about John Schaefer in the past was his skepticism or distrust of the government. Let me just go on the record and say it is absolutely good of you to be distrustful and skeptical of the government. That doesn't mean that you're a conspiracy theorist. It just means that you don't think that the government is perfect, that they can make mistakes, and that therefore you are willing to review the policies that they offer. John regrettably never became a skeptical person. He became a cynic. He became a person who distrusts everything the government does and assumes that anything not done by the government or against the government rather is ipso facto accurate, correct and positive. But don't fall for the idea that questioning the government, being skeptical of the government or distrusting government action is somehow bad or anti-patriotic or anything like that. It is good. You should question uh, what your government is doing for you and especially to you. And also, I thought it was important to do this, and I can show you this here, because of the way in which some of these things were covered. Let me just pull it up here. Uh, and just to, because just to demonstrate, I think is is very important, the level of coverage, right? Ice Earth John Schaefer now listed on FBI's most wanted. Again, Ice Earth John Schaefer is on FBI's most wanted for storming the U.S. Capitol. So here's the link if you follow it, and people read, well, FBI most wanted, and they thought, okay, John is on the FBI most wanted. Now... As a nerdy dude, uh, I, I know that the most wanted list in the FBI tend to be like murderers and John is accused of trespassing. So what happened was that people went into this website, so FBI, so most wanted, and real realized that this is a link and not a title. So that if you click on the most wanted, you then get the 10 most wanted fugitives. You can see that John is not among them. And that then they have, uh, they're seeking information on people who assaulted police officers at the Capitol. Also, John is not there. In the people who are accused of assaulting police officers, John is so far accused only of the trespassing. Hopefully, that's all he did. Who knows? Uh, ladies and gentlemen, I cannot believe that you have, some of you, stayed for two hours listening to some person you don't know talk about a musician that will probably be, uh, be in prison very soon. 
uh, and listening to a lot of ideas that are not necessarily mainstream ideas. Uh, and you have been extremely patient and tolerant uh, in putting up with me. So I really want to thank you enormously for taking the time to do it. And if I can ask you to do something for me, I would like to ask you to subscribe, to like, and if you can, to comment underneath whatever it is that you say that helps the YouTube algorithm. There is a tipping link, but the truth is that I will continue doing these things whether people give me money or not, so I don't care. But... Uh, but I do care about getting the stuff out. So if you can like, comment, share if you found it interested, interesting, I really sincerely hope that you will. And really, just uh, thank you so much for doing it. Really, sincerely, it was it's so incredible for me that, that you have decided to spend so much time on this. If there are any topics that you want to know more about, and also... Um, if you go to Facebook and you look for Metal Blast, uh, we post the articles there. The links are above. That's where you can find them. Uh, and that's it. We never published, uh, you know, sponsored content or things like that. So anything you post, you may we post, you may like or dislike, but it's going to be just content. We're not advertising anything. We're not putting clickbait shit or anything. So once again, thank you so much for everything. The a video, the introduction, that little animation of me was made by Abby Stabby, who uh, spent two hours today making it for reasons that I really, truly do not understand. So I want to thank her specifically for doing that. And thank you all. If you have any questions about what we talk about today, please don't hesitate to send me an email. I'm always happy to answer because I'm always surprised that there are people listening. So thank you so much. Have a fantastic time. Please take care of yourselves. Uh, take care of your families. Stay metal. Don't ever trust authority Pigs, parents, and our society You got to play by your own set of rules Fuck the law, fuck the law, fuck the law Burn the beers Mr. Pigman, you are nothing Nothing to seal behind your badge Always snorting out lies and deceit Pawn the way, pawn the way to your boring society Fuck authority, fuck authority Kill the president of seniority Fuck authority Fuck authority Let's murder a society Little pig man behind judge's robe I can't wait to see you die You piece, you piece of puppet property shit you're nothing but a lie so full of shit If you live nothing, you are nothing Dissolved by the stagnating masses I say it's time to say Fuck the law Kill, kill, kill Kill them motherfucking asses Fuck authority, fuck authority Kill the president of seniority Fuck authority, fuck authority Let's murder in society Cause when I fall Cause when I fall, I'll fall hard Going down with everything Going down with everything that I am